In 2010, Els Van Doren was a 38-year-old mother of two, married to an Antwerp jeweler named Jan. Els worked in the family jewelry store, but her true passion was skydiving. She first began skydiving in 1994 with her husband, although her husband later gave up skydiving as he was not as passionate about it as his wife. This was a 26-year-old school teacher by the name of Els Klottermans. Since the pair shared the same first name, Els Van Doren at one point suggested that everyone in the skydiving club call her younger friend Babs, so there would be less confusion. Another fellow clubmate known to the two women was a handsome man named Marcel Summers. The three were great friends and even became jumping partners during their dives. As time progressed, however, Els Van Doren began to grow closer to Marcel, despite being a married woman and their platonic relationship soon turned romantic. As Els's family were used to her spending all of her weekends away from home at the skydiving club, this provided the perfect disguise for her husband not to grow suspicious of all of the time she was secretly spending with Marcel. The pair would even spend much of their time at Marcel's apartment. Unbeknownst to Els was that it was not just the first name that she was sharing with her younger club member, Els Klottermans. Against the knowledge of both, Marcel had secretly been dating both women. In order to coordinate the two relationships, Marcel had set days in which he would spend with each woman. On Fridays, he would spend the day with Babs, whilst on Saturdays, he would dedicate himself to Els Van Doren. This worked in Marcel's favor for a short time. However, one weekend would turn out a little unexpected. On Friday 10th, November 2006, Babs turned up to Marcel's home as scheduled for their weekly rendezvous. However, Els Van Doren had decided to surprise her love interest that night by turning up to his home unexpectedly. Babs and Marcel had been out dining together at the time, but when they arrived back to Marcel's apartment, they were met with Els Van Doren waiting eagerly outside his door. It is unknown what discussion took place in the moments that followed, but that night, it would not be Babs sharing Marcel's bed. Instead, she was forced to sleep in a sleeping bag on the living room floor whilst Els Van Doren and Marcel took to the bedroom. Babs was left to sleep on the floor in Marcel's home. It was here that Babs noticed Els Van Doren's parachute and other jumping gear close to where she was lay. Feeling hurt and betrayed after being lied to and cast aside for her former friend, Babs did the unthinkable. An action that would lead to a fatal tragedy later on. On 18th November 2006, Els, Babs, Marcel, and another skydiver named Tom were scheduled to jump in a four-person formation at 13,000 feet. The group were set to dive in a formation. As they prepared to jump from the plane, Els, Marcel, and Tom dove out from the plane as intended. However, it appeared that Babs had failed to jump after missing her cue, jumping out slightly later than the others. As the group fell in freefall, it appeared that Babs could not catch up to them. At 9,000 feet, Els, Marcel, and Tom broke formation, all set to safely open up their parachutes. It was at this point when it became clear that something was gravely wrong. As Els began to pull at the cords to activate her parachute, it failed to open. Trying not to panic, Els remembered the procedures in the case of an emergency. Her parachute had once failed to open once before, resulting in her having to activate her reserve parachute. This time, however, while still in free fall and traveling at around 200 kilometers per hour, she had less than 20 seconds to save herself so that she could land successfully. Els Van Doren jumping from the plane moments before disaster. She tugged at the reserve cord, but even this would not open. Growing more frantic now, she continued to pull on the cords to her main parachute and reserve, but nothing happened. Marcel noticed something was amiss as he watched Els 800 meters below him and just 500 meters from the ground with her parachute still not activated. There was nothing he could do except watch on in horror. In a last bid effort, Els desperately tried to untangle the cords of her parachute to open it. At the same time as this was going on, a woman was outside in her garden hanging washing in the town of Opglabik. She became alarmed when she heard a loud thud. As she looked up, she could see an individual traveling down from the sky towards her garden with a parachute. This was a sight she had seen many times as her home was located just a few kilometers away from the skydiving club and the landing field which they used. As she turned to continue hanging her washing, the lady noticed a white cloth hanging on the top of her shrubs. As she approached the shrubs, she noticed somebody lying in between the bushes. The lady called to her husband, who was also in the garden carrying out maintenance, and they immediately called emergency services. The body belonged to that of Els Van Doren. Els had dropped from a height of more than two miles and was not showing any signs of life. Els Van Doren had fallen to her death. Meanwhile, Marcel had found a safe place to land. 
and had taken to running up the streets, screaming for Els and attempting to figure out where she had landed. An ambulance soon passed him and Marcel ran after it, following it to the nearby home where Els had landed. As he ran to where Els was lying, he had to be held back as the emergency crew made their way towards her. When emergency services arrived at the scene, they attempted resuscitation, but it would be of no use. Els Van Doren was dead. Marcel was adamant that nobody should touch Els's parachute, claiming that it was not normal for both the main and reserve parachute to fail to open. Using Elsa's phone, he then called Elsa's husband, Jan, and informed him of the terrible news. Jan rushed to be by his wife's side. Meanwhile, Tom and Babs made their way back to the parachute club, where the news of Elsa's death was broken to the rest of the members. Whilst the rest of the club's members struggled to take in the news, Babs fell to her knees and began to wail loudly. Elsa's husband, Jan, soon arrived to the club to collect her personal belongings, where he came into contact with Babs, who offered to fetch Els's items for him. He noted how she appeared motionless at this point and appeared to have a grin on her face. Babs made her way to the changing rooms and Jan followed behind. However, Babs shut the door in his face and locked it behind her so he could not enter. Jan has stated how Babs took a significant amount of time before she re-emerged with Els's things. Back at the scene of the accident, the police had collected Els's parachute and her helmet, which had contained a video camera of her jump. An autopsy was carried out on Els, and this determined that she had not been under the influence of any alcohol or drugs that may have affected her ability to function as normal. Her death was ruled as either a murder or a suicide. Ella's cause of death was caused by many fractures and internal bleeding that had resulted from the impact of the fall. Elsa's family began to suspect that Els had been murdered by somebody from her club, somebody with extensive knowledge of parachutes. Due to this, the members of the club were asked not to attend Elsa's funeral service. This request was ignored by some members of the club, though, including none other than Els Clottermans. Els Babs Clottermans attended Els Van Doren's funeral service. Elsa's family were to undergo even more devastation when they found out from the police that she had been having an extramarital affair with Marcel Summers for more than five years. Jan was particularly hurt as the other members of the skydiving club had known about this, and he had even been friends with some of them from his own time as a member of the club. Els had in fact even told her fellow club members that she was separated from her husband. A fact that was simply not true. Elsa's funeral was held just one day before the 15th birthday of her daughter, Carol. At the funeral, Carol read a statement to her mother expressing how many times the family had asked her to stop diving and also made it clear that they wished she would have been around more. Although she ended her statement expressing how her mother was unique and would have been unhappy if she had to quit her passion. Ronnie Marion is a specialist in parachutes. Police took the raised concerns regarding Els's reserve parachute also failing to open and soon after her funeral they began an investigation. A diving expert with extensive knowledge of parachutes and how they operate was called in to examine Els's parachute to analyze whether anything was amiss. Immediately, the expert noticed that Els had been missing one very crucial part of her parachute. It was determined that Els's pilot chute had been missing, resulting in her tragic death. This was a small auxiliary parachute used to deploy the main or reserve parachute. This is an integral part of the jumping equipment and must have been removed by somebody intentionally. There were also clear signs of tampering as it was noted that the drawstring to the pilot chute that should activate the main chute had been cut along with one of the hanging straps to the emergency parachute. Looking back through the final body cam video of Els's ill-fated jump, an unidentified red fabric could be seen hanging in front of Els's face. This was not a part of Els's jumping equipment, and investigators could not work out what this was. They urged the residents of Opglabik to check their gardens and the surrounding areas to try and locate the red object. They asked that if it was found, it be treated carefully as evidence as it may contain the DNA from the individual who had sabotaged Els's parachute. Unfortunately, this was not located. On the Monday after Els Van Doren's death, the pilot chute was miraculously found by none other than Els Clottermans, Babs. She had been on her way home from Marcel's apartment. She claimed that as she was driving home, she had noticed the chute hanging from a tree between Opglabik and Genk. Clottermans did not phone the police, however. She phoned Marcel to tell him of her discovery. It would be Marcel who phoned the police upon hearing the news and they made their way to the tree. Once they arrived, they were met with a hysterically and clearly emotional Els Clottermans. Police, however, were suspicious about how Clottermans had happened upon the pilot chute. 
She had claimed that this was by pure chance as she had taken a different route home that day to her usual journey. She claimed to have been stuck behind a tractor, moving very slowly, and when she looked up, she had seen the chute dangling from the tree around 20 meters above. She claimed that this must have been a sign from Els Van Doren in heaven. Police were not buying into this. Nobody apart from the investigators had even known that the pilot chute had been missing. The three main suspects in Els Van Doren's apparent murder were now her husband Jan, her lover Marcel, and her friend Els Klottermans. Police seized items from Marcel's home, and he was soon ruled out as a suspect. Soon after, Els Van Doren's husband Jan was also later eliminated as a suspect by police. Police did, however, also remove items from the home of Els Klottermans, including her phone, laptop, and a diary containing her feelings, which her psychiatrist had asked her to keep track of. Els Klottermans was soon asked to attend questioning at the police station so that investigators could gain further insight into her relationship with Marcel Van Doren and also the day of Van Doren's death. During questioning, Klottermans was adamant that she had nothing to do with sabotaging Els's parachute. She instead tries to pin the blame on either Marcel, who she says kept hold of Els's gear when she stayed on weekends, or her husband Jan, who she kept her gear with during the week. After questioning, Klottermans was released and free to return home, but was called in again on 20th December 2006 for a second interview. However, she would never show up to this one. After tracking her down, police discovered that Klottermans had attempted suicide that morning after having taken an overdose of sleeping pills and antidepressants. She had been found unresponsive by her mother and was rushed to hospital to be treated. In letters written to loved ones before her suicide attempt, she had stated that she was finding it hard to cope with losing her close friend, and the stress of now being a murder suspect in the case was too much for her. After her recovery, Babs was sent to a psychiatric hospital where she was kept under close observation for 15 days. She had been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and depression years earlier, and this had not been the first time she had attempted to take her own life. Marcel, however, decided to cut her off. He believed that this had been done for attention by Babs and believed that she had not meant to take her life. He stated that she must have taken the pills shortly before she knew that her mother would return home and that the sole purpose was that she must have had something to do with Elsa's death. And police were gaining on her, catching her in her own web of lies. Soon after, while still under psychiatric care on January 11, 2007, Els Klottermans was arrested on suspicion of the murder of Els Van Doren. Els Klottermans was arrested for Els Van Doren's murder. Els Klottermans appeared in court on the 19th January 2007, where it was decided that she would be kept in custody whilst the investigation continued. Els Klottermans was asked to take a polygraph test but refused and this was never carried out. Further examination of Els Van Doren's diving gear was taken and it was discovered that the parachute cords had been cut with a pair of scissors and whoever had done so was right-handed. By March 2007, Klottermans had been in prison for three months. During this time, she underwent even more significant questioning, but would still not admit guilt. During questioning, she did admit, however, that she had been the culprit who had once sent an anonymous letter to Van Doren claiming that what she was doing to her family was wrong. Jan had found this letter, but believed that it was in reference to Els staying away from her family so often to skydive. He later threw this letter away and did not take any notice. In hindsight, it was now apparent that Klottermans had meant this as a warning for Els Van Doren to end her affair with Marcel. She also admitted that she had been the one to place anonymous calls to Marcel when she knew that he was with Van Doren, with her heavy breathing down the phone in an attempt to intimidate them. Upon looking into Els Klottermans' automatic activation device, AAD, they could see that she had jumped later than the rest of the team and activated her parachute sooner, allowing her to watch the scene unfold from above. This would have also allowed her to keep an eye on whereabouts Els Van Doren's black pilot chute had landed for her to retrieve later on. Els Klotterman's lawyer successfully had her released on bail in September 2008. She went on to work in a school whilst the investigation was still ongoing. The murder trial began on 24 September 2010. The prosecution was confident that there was enough evidence for them to get a murder charge for Klotterman's. The motive was given as jealousy upon finding out her lover was also having a relationship with her close friend. She had also once stated to investigators that she had admitted that she knew she had been second best to Els Van Doren in the eyes of Marcel Summers and that he had preferred Van Doren over her. Due to this, she had desperately wanted to eliminate her love rival and have him out of the picture. 
Clotterman's defense lawyer argued that the prosecution had nothing but circumstantial evidence and allegations to back up their claims. Els Clottermans testified herself, stating that she did not even see a future with Marcel and had only been sleeping with him due to her low self-esteem. In one instance, Els Clottermans even tried to point the finger at Van Doren's daughter, claiming that she had perhaps wanted to punish her mother for not being home at the weekends. Despite her desperate attempts to manipulate the jury and sway the blame away from her, the jury saw through her and on October 20th, 2010, Els Clottermans was found guilty of the murder of her former friend and she was sentenced to 30 years imprisonment. After the trial began, Klotmans, who maintained her innocence, was placed on suicide watch. Klotmans appealed the verdict on the ground that she was interrogated by police without her attorney present. The appeal was denied in May 2011. In June 2022, after a third appeal and after serving just 12.5 years, Ellis Klotmans was allowed, subject to conditions, to leave prison for good. As of 2023, Ellis Klotmans is a free woman, 